In this problem we're given a circle and a right triangle. The radius of the circle is given as 10. This arc length AB in red is given as x and the side AC of the right triangle is given as x plus a half and we're looking for this length BC labeled H in here. So this is the length from the edge of the circle to point C which is the corner of the right triangle. And just before I get into the solution, if you're hoping for a nice, neat, simple solution, uh, I couldn't find one. This solution is going to get quite complicated, but if you do find a, a nice, neat solution, please let me know in the comments. So where to begin with a problem like this? Well, the first thing that I noticed was this, was this length AC is the tangent of this angle. And my solution is going to focus on finding this angle and then finding this length OC. Um, so how can I relate this length to the angle? Well, as I said, it's the tangent function. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, watch my video on a geometric understanding of the trig functions, and you'll understand why this length is defined as the tangent function of this angle. So that's the first thing I noticed. And when the radius is one, this length is just tan theta, but if it's anything other than one, we scale that length up. So this is going to be 10, the radius times tan of theta. So AC is equal to 10 times the tan of theta and this is equal to x plus a half. So this is where I started. And then I noticed that x can also be related to theta. The arc length here, if we're talking in radians, this arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. So x is equal to 10 times theta. Uh, that's how you find the arc length if, you're ha if you have an angle in radians. So then I can write this equation as 10 tan theta equal to 10 theta plus uh, 0.5, I'll write that as a decimal. And then dividing through by 10 to neaten it up a little bit, I have 10 tan theta equal to theta plus 0.05. And when I got to this point, I was fairly confident because I have an equation with one unknown of theta. I can go ahead and solve for theta and then I can find h. But actually it turns out this equation is quite difficult to solve. And what I ended up doing is using the newton raphson method to get an approximation for theta. And I believe that's the best you can do here. I don't think there's a way to find an exact value of h. So I'm going to go ahead and use the newton raphson method uh, to get an approximation. And the newton raphson method says that the next approximation for theta, so theta 1 sub 1, is equal to theta sub 0 take f of theta sub zero over f dash of theta sub zero. Okay, this is, you know, a way of solving or finding an approximation for a, an equation that you can't really solve algebraically. And I'm not going to explain this method. Uh, that's for other videos. If you're curious about the newton raphson method, uh, check out other videos on that. But that's the tool I'm going to be using here. And so to start this off, you need an initial approximation for theta. And for this, I use the diagram. It's kind of implied in the diagram that theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, or 0 and pi and 2. So that's about 0 to 1.5 in radians, approximately. So I took 1 as my initial approximation for theta. I figured that would eventually get me to a decent approximation. And if you start closer to the actual answer, you'll get a, a better approximation quicker. But I started at theta sub zero equal to one. And to start this off, I need to find f of one and f dash of one and repeat the iteration until I'm happy with the approximation. Actually, what I need to do first is define this as a function of theta. So I'll just move this down a little bit. Um, so what we can do with this equation is write it equal to zero. So rearranging this equation, I can say that tan theta take theta take 0 0.05 is equal to zero. And then I can say that f of theta is equal to tan theta take theta take 0 0.05. And then I'm looking for the zeros of this function. And that's what this uh, this method does. So looking for the zeros of this function, oh, I also need f dash of theta, as I was saying. Apologies for, for not being too clear on the start here. f dash of theta, that's, uh, this is actually not too difficult. The derivative of tan theta is sec squared theta, and the derivative of theta is just one. So f dash of theta is sec squared theta take one. And starting with theta sub zero equal to one, Plugging this into f of theta, f of theta, uh, actually let's put a one there, f of one is equal to 10 of one take 
one take 0 0.05. So let's put that into a calculator. Um, so 10 of one take one take 0 0.05 and I get uh, 0 0.507407 and I'll round these all to six significant figures to try to get some level of accuracy. And then F dash of one, plugging one into this and I don't have the secant function on my calculator so I'm going to have to do one over the cosine of uh, one squared take one. One over the cosine is the same as the secant function and this gives me 2.4, 2 2.42552. Okay, again, rounding off to six significant figures. And then my next approximation, theta sub one, is equal to one, take these two things. Actually, I won't write that down. Let's just write the value. So now I have f of one, f dash of one. I can plug these into this formula and find my next approximation for theta. So theta sub zero is one, and I'll do one take this fraction here. So one take 0 0.507408 over, oops, divided by 2.42552, oops, five two, and I get 0 0.790, 804 to six significant figures. 0 0.790804. And now I'm going to repeat this process until I get an accuracy of about two or three significant figures. And a sensible person would use a, a spreadsheet or something like that for this. Uh, I'm mainly doing this to show you the process, but I am going to fast forward it because I realize plugging numbers into a calculator is not that interesting. So I'm going to repeat this process maybe four or five times and then we'll end up with a decent approximation for theta. So finding f of theta again. Okay, so I have done, iterated that newton raphson method uh, four times and theta sub four. My fourth approximation, I got 0 0.513258, which I've rounded to two significant figures of 0 0.51. So after all of that, I have an approximation for this angle of 0.51 radians. If you want to think in degrees, that's about 30 degrees. And now I have that angle, finding H shouldn't be too difficult. So this length OC is defined as the secant of this angle. And if the radius is 10, we multiply that by 10. So OC is, well, firstly, it's the radius times the secant of theta. So the radius is 10. And our angle that we're using is 0.51 approximately. And to find H, I'm going to do, uh, well, H is equal to uh, OC, take the radius, right? This length in here, which is 10. So uh, H is equal to OC, take R. So this is going to be 10 sec of 0 0.51, take 10. And putting that into a calculator now, we have 10 uh, divided by a cosine of 0 0.51, take 10 and I get an answer of 1.458. Rounding off to three significant figures, this is 1.46, so approximately 1.46. Okay, so after all of that, my approximate solution for H is 1.46, and if the radius was in meters, this would be 1.46 meters, for example. So as I have repeatedly said, this is an approximation. Let's see what the actual accurate answer is using Wolfram Alpha. I'm going to put in this equation and get an accurate solution for theta and then put that into this equation down here. So here you can see I put in 10 of x take x take 0 0.05 equal to zero. And it gives you a whole bunch of solutions, of course, because uh, the solutions are infinite. But the one I care about is between zero and pi, and that's this one here. So x is approximately 0.5120398. So you can see comparing that to my uh, fourth approximation, it's accurate to 
two significant figures. And I actually went ahead and did this a fifth time just to see. And the fifth approximation was uh, 0.51204. And that's accurate to five significant figures. So you can see if you continue this process, you get more and more accurate. But theta sub four was good enough for me. So I have my accurate solution for theta. Then I went ahead and put that into the uh, formula to find h. So 10 secant of that angle, take 10 and the result is 1.47. So comparing that to my answer, that's accurate to two significant figures. Not bad, 1.46 versus 1.47, not too bad at all. Um, but again, if I'd used this one, I would have got a more accurate solution here. So there you go, uh, final answer there for H of 1.46. Fairly involved, as I said at the start, I'm not sure if there's a simpler way to solve this. Let me know in the comments if you do know of one, uh, but there you go, that is uh, an innocent looking problem. The diagram I think looks quite simple, but actually to get an answer there is quite difficult. So let me know what you think. I hope you found that problem interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.